you know, sometimes it's just nice to have, you, you, when you think about stability and you think about predictability, you know, Darren and that voice, uh, the recognition that he does uh, in creating things and apparel, but that voice, it's just one of those things that just gives me the warm fuzzies. So, Darren, thank you. Well, coaches, we have a great call today. Um, excited about the topic, excited about the presenter. Uh, we have a 2014 elite coach. She's been coaching for two and a half years. She's been in success club for 30 months. That, of course, makes her a Success Club 10 all-star legend, which is pretty cool. That means a minimum of 24 consecutive months in Success Club. She is currently an eight-star diamond coach with 15 lifetime diamonds on her team. And these are the stats that I really like. The other ones kind of tell you what they've been able to achieve, but this stat tells you what they're currently doing. In the last 90 days, uh, she has had 12 coaches advance in rank. She's an executive leader on the leadership ladder. We are thrilled to have all the way from Beaver Creek, Oregon, uh, eight-star diamond coach, Missy Reber. Missy, are you there? I'm here, Jeff. I'm so excited to be here today. So thank you so much for having me. Well, you know what? We're thrilled to have you. You know, we were talking just a little bit uh, before this call, and apparently you have been a hunting widow of sorts. Is that right? It's right. My husband just got back last week from being hunting with our eight-year-old for almost two weeks, and I'm really glad to have my husband and my partner in crime back home with me. Well, that's good because I have a daughter whose husband is a famous hunter, and by the time he gets back from those types of trips, she is ready to hunt him down and shoot him. She, I mean, with the kids, she's ready. So uh, I'm glad that he is back and uh, life might return to, to normal. Hey, well, listen, Missy, let's, let's jump in. Coach for two and a half years. Uh, how did that all, how was that introduction made? You plus Beachbody. Me plus Beachbody. You know, it's funny. I don't think any of us ever really dreamed that when we grew up, we were going to be Beachbody coaches. I don't think I did. Um, but I was always a little girl with really big dreams. In fact, the other day, my husband was going through our garage, and he pulled out this list from an old journal of goals that I had made, a life list of sorts, when I was about 12. And we had a good laugh about all the things that were on that list. And I had all these big dreams of becoming a wife and a mom and a registered nurse and helping find a cure for cancer and building schools in Africa and saving orphans in South America. And I just really deeply always wanted to grow up and make a difference and feel like I matter to the world. And those dreams really motivated me. And I accomplished a lot of those things rather quickly in my life. At 17, I graduated from high school. I went to college. I graduated at 19 with my nursing degree. I worked for the first two years at Primary Children's Hospital, caring for kids with cancer and their families. And in that same time, I got married, had four kids in seven years, and was putting my husband through school. And somewhere in there, along the lines of chasing my dreams and taking care of everybody else, I lost myself. And having all the babies and juggling working nights with my husband in school left me totally drowning in my life. And I just, I started to struggle with anxiety and depression after I had my babies. And I lost sight of that little girl who believed she could save the world. And after my fourth baby, I just woke up and I knew I had to make a change. I knew I had to figure out how to get my life back. So the logical choice, of course, was to do the insanity program. I took the hard road. And so I bought the insanity program after my fourth baby and I fought my way through two rounds of insanity and I lost 40 pounds of baby weight. And after that, I just felt the spark come back. And I'd lost the 40 pounds and I learned that if I exercise and I work on my nutrition, it significantly helps my depression and anxiety. And so I just found that I was better and I found that belief in myself again. And I wanted to believe that I could go out and help people. So I started helping my friends. And I actually had this group on Facebook called Rockstar Moms. And I was just motivating other moms. And at that point, my coach, Brigitte Linford, found me and told me that I could actually do this as a job. And at first, that freaked me out a little bit. And I just, I didn't know how to run a business. And so I told Brigitte no almost seven times. I think I'm ashamed to say it, but it's true. But sooner or later, that drive and that impact and that desire to want to help people and impact the world made me finally decide to sign up as a coach. 
uh, you know, just listening to you talk and about the things that you accomplished by like 19 um, were uh, fatiguing. Just just for the, the the number of things that you do, I was I was a little disappointed when you say, and I didn't create world peace, and I didn't and I didn't cure cancer completely. But it seems like you did quite a few things. Uh, so congratulations on that. But you know, um, but the story is very real. Right. I mean, as you grow and as you do things and, 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 and move at a frenetic pace and life gets introduced to us and, and you know, the tops and, and, and turviness. But uh, it's it, we're so glad that your life met with 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 Beachbody. So as you became a coach, um, you know, we always talk about this on every call, kind of those moments, aha moments. And I sometimes think it may not be a moment, it may be a process or it may be looking back that you kind of see here's a point where things started to make sense, where it started to get, you know, get a little bit more traction, where I learned enough to, for it to, to, you know, for me to really start uh, understanding. Did that happen in your business, Missy? Yes. You know, as a new coach, I was really afraid. I mean, staring at Facebook, not knowing what to do, kind of afraid. And I was really passionate about the products, and I knew what they had done for me, and I knew that they would help people. But I was terrified of the idea of running a business. Truth was, is I didn't believe that I could really be successful in the business. I was just this girl with a big heart who wanted to save the world. But I didn't feel like I was very good at anything except for loving people. And I was moderately successful as a new coach. I had success clubs. I was running challenge groups. And I loved it. I loved helping people. But I was just stuck at Emerald four months into the business, and I had no confidence that I was really ever going to move past being an average coach. I didn't see myself becoming a leader, but as they would have it, about four months into coaching, my coach sent me a prize for hitting Success Club, and it turns out that the book she sent me was the book that changed my entire business, and that book was called The Greatest Salesman in the World by Og Mandino. And at first, I honestly refused to open it because, of course, it was about sales, and I wasn't good at sales, and I didn't want to sell things. I just wanted to love people. But it's personal development, and so I buckled down, and I was like, it's only 20, 125 pages. How bad can it be? But the truth is that this book changed my business because it's a story about a young man who wants to follow in the footsteps of his mentor. He wanted to become the greatest salesman in the world, and surely I definitely needed the business help, so I kept reading. And his mentor in the book passes on to him the gift of 10 ancient scrolls, and each scroll teaches a concept that he needs to master before the next. And each teaching on the scrolls when mastered would give him the skills to become the greatest salesman in the world. But here was the amazing part for me. The first foundational business skill that the scrolls taught him that he needed to master was love. I was like totally floored, fell off my chair. It could not be love. I was shocked. And that was the minute that I realized I could do that. I could love people. In fact, like I felt like I was pretty decent at loving people. And I thought for the first time, maybe I had the potential to be a successful coach and a leader. And literally, it has become the foundation of everything I do in my business. And this is the quote that has stuck out for me that I actually have on my wall in my office. And it says this, and it says, if I have no other qualities, I can succeed with love alone. Without it, I will fail. Though I possess all the knowledge and skills in the world, I will greet this day with love and I will succeed. And so from that point forward, I took that as my green light, that I could build this business with love and that I would succeed. Gosh dang it, I was going to do it. Yeah, well, I love, I love that. By the way, I love the book, uh, Greatest Salesman in the World. It's a, it, it, it's, I think one of those, it, it's one of those kind of books that everybody uh, out there ought to read when they're talking about personal development, even you know, over the holidays. That would be a great book if you haven't read it um, to to go read. So when you talk about love, I mean, you know, people are kind of may maybe scratching their head a little bit and then saying to themselves. Okay, national wake-up call, rah, rah, go get them. I, I get the concept of love and helping people, but how do you take that down now to really building your business? How, how did you translate that into actionable behavior that created results in what you created as a very successful business? 
You know, and that's what I thought at first, too. I was like, there's no way that loving people can actually turn into a successful business. But it's true. And it's actually a very simple secret that I've applied to my business and I have taught to my coaches. And the truth is, is I believe that you can run your entire business with love by asking one question, really one question. That's all you need. So if you guys are ready for it, get out of your get out your pens and papers and write this down because you're not going to want to forget it. The one magic question you need to run your entire business is how are you? That's it. That's really all you need. And why does that work? Why does that drive your business and push love into every nook and cranny of your business? And it works whether you're a new a new coach or star diamond coach. It doesn't matter. But why does it work? It seems way too easy. But the reason that it works is because all humans thrive on connection. They need someone to care about them. They need someone to make them feel like they matter. And that's what we're supposed to do as coaches. As coaches, we are there to ask this question, how are you? It's that simple. And then we really care about the answer. That's our job, and that's all we need to do. Beachbody gives us the fitness and nutrition tools to help people But our job is to create a culture of love and connection so people are actually empowered to use the tools to change their life. And I want you to write this down. If people are, if people feel cared for, they will be committed. If people in our business feel like they matter, they will be motivated. So how are you? I want to show you how I have applied that specific question to every step of my business because our goal as coaches is not just to sell challenge packs. It's to empower people to change. It's to turn contacts into customers and customers into coaches. And that is how love drives your business. It's connecting those three steps of your business. And I call those connection steps. You have to connect with each one of those steps before you move to the next one. And how do you connect with it? By asking that one question. So let me give you an example. Everybody wants a growing contact list. Contact is the first connection step in your business. So how do we grow our contact list? Contact list? How do we find people? I just want you to go out into your community in your daily life and ask this question. Try it out for a week and see what you get, and you'll be shocked. People are not used to other people reaching out and caring about them. And if you'll just get in the habit of asking this question wherever you go, asking people, hey, how are you, and listening, you're going to learn a lot about yourself, a lot about other people, and you're going to have a growing contact list. So when you're looking at your contact list, I want you to remember that you need to stop and ask this question first before you go and invite them. If you will ask how are you first, if you will reach out to people and be more interested in what's going on in their life before you ask them to be interested in you, you are going to get more yeses when you invite people. I teach my team to do this. We call them reach out. It's actually on our business activity tracker. Why? Because when you connect first by asking people how they are, by using the magic question, people are more likely to say yes. So I want you to stop yourself and make sure that you're connecting with people. I want to tell you one quick story about a girl that came to me from my likes page. I had put a challenge group invitation up on my like page, and she sent me a message, and she was ready to commit. And she would have signed up right then and there. But I looked back through our messages, and I realized that I had never connected with her before. So I stopped myself from sending her the challenge pack link right away, and I asked her the question. I said, you know, I would love to have you in my challenge group. It's going to be amazing. I know you'll be great in the group. But tell me about you. How are you doing? And in that moment, this girl poured out this story to me about how she'd been through the darkest year of her life, how she had a stillborn and she'd lost her baby and she was in this dark place and just trying to take one step forward to move through the grieving process and how she found that if she just did something to take care of herself, she could cope better. And that's what she was looking for. And just think if I had never asked her that question. What if I wouldn't have stopped myself? I could have just signed her up. I could have just sold the challenge pack and got two success club points. 
but I wouldn't have been able to be the coach to her that she needed if I wouldn't have been there to ask the question and listen to the answer. So I want you to remember this with your contacts, that when you're taking your contacts to that second connection step of customer, you need to connect to them first by asking the question, and it will drive them to the next step in your business. So let's talk about the second connection step in your business, the customer. Now hopefully you've connected them to them as a contact. You have now got them as a customer. What do we do with our customers as coaches? We put them in challenge groups. And challenge groups are our way of asking the how are you question every single day. But I want you to I want to share something that I've learned with my challenge groups that I've encouraged my challengers to do. And that is I encourage them to ask the question to each other. On the first day, I have everybody answer the question. How are you doing? Why are you here? What do you want out of this challenge group? And everybody posts it to the wall. That's pretty familiar. I'm sure a lot of you guys do that to the group. But when you get in the group and you say, I'm not the leader. You guys are leading this group as much as me. I'm just the coach. You guys are here to lead each other. Then something magic happens. And a culture of connection is created in your challenge group. And they ask each other the question. When someone goes missing, people notice and they reach out to them. And it creates a culture of connection and love in your challenge group that people don't want to leave. I also make it a point that I set a day where I reach out to my challengers every single week to make sure that I'm connecting with them personally. And it's not hard. All I do is ask, how are you? I ask the question every single week. So I'm making sure that I'm personally being the coach that they need. Then once you've created this culture in your challenge group by asking the how are you question, the third connection step in your business is natural. We want all our contacts to become loyal customers and then become coaches. We want them to be Beachbody for life because Beachbody is amazing and it's changed all of our life. So the way you do that is by continuing that connection to the next step. So when it comes to using the how are you question to bringing coaches to your team and to running your team, how do you do that? How do you apply that easy question to build the connections with your team and your new coaches. It all starts with that first contact with your coach. It starts with the getting started right call. The first thing you should ask your new coach is how are you? You need to connect to your new coaches. If they feel connected to you, they will be more motivated and they will want to work their business more because they feel like you have their, your back. They, you feel like, they feel like you have their back and they know you're going to be there for them. So it's not just the new coach that you need to ask this question to. I ask this coach to every coach every time. And what it does is it makes them understand that I care more about them and their lives than I do about their success club points and their rank advancements. But the funny thing is, is when you do that first, your coaches will thrive and you will have more success club points and more rank advancements. And of course, everybody wants that in their team. So ask the question every time and be prepared to listen. Because when your coaches feel like they matter to you, they will be motivated. Now, all of us want motivated coaches, right? And that happens all the time, right? Everybody's motivated all the time. Nope, that's not true. Because guess what? Life happens. People go inactive. People might even quit. So here's something interesting that I've found about asking the how are you question. This works for active coaches. It works for coaches building to a certain rank or pushing for something. But it also works for inactive coaches and coaches who have quit. I can't tell you how many times I have had a coach come back from being inactive or come back from quitting to thrive on my team because even after they fell off the face of the earth, all I did was reach out to them and give them some love and ask them the how are you question. I want you guys to know that this is a skill. It's a skill that everybody can start today to put a little bit more of love into their business and give your business that extra push to thrive and to really feel good. Because all of us want a business that is successful on paper, sure. 
but we also want a business that feels successful in our hearts. We will work our business harder if we actually love our business. So put a little love into your business. Now with my team, we live by the mantra, love, lift, lead. And that idea means that there is no real leader on the team. Everyone on my team is as important as the next person. Everybody answers questions, everybody shares ideas, everybody is there to love each other. We expect that every new coach onto our team will then reach out their hand to the next person. And I trained my entire team to do this by asking that one simple question. And as a leader, they know that when I'm struggling, they're gonna know about it because they ask me the question. They ask me, how are you doing? And that way, I don't ever have to feel like I'm carrying the whole team because we care, carry the team together. And all we do is live by the one question, how are you? And then we love and lift and lead the team together. And that's it. It's really been that simple for me to just apply that simple question to running my entire business. And it's something that you can do to push your business forward and to put some love back into your business starting today. Missy, well done. I, you know, it's, there, there's about 30 places I wanted to stop and ask, but I know you had a lot of content to, to share on this. But the thing that I, that I you know, really appreciate about this is, it, is first, um, I think it goes to the, I don't, I, it's not I think, it goes to the heart of, of really who we are as a business. And it's about other people, helping other people really achieve their goals and to get real results. And um, in order to do that authentically, that your, your question hits the nail on the head. That's one. Two, um, every person can do what you said. Uh, everyone can, can do that. And the other piece that I loved that you said was, you know, what we want to do is first create loyal customers in the business. Um, not everyone will become a coach. And if they do, they'll become, we know that loyal customers become better coaches. If they choose to become a coach and then not be a coach, they'll still be loyal customers and they know that they care. I love the point of you saying when, you know what, if someone goes missing because a connection was made, people know that they're missing and they reach out and they know that they're part of a community, part of a connection. Uh, so, I mean, anyway, there's a, there's a hundred points that I could go over that I think were so, so powerful. So thank you so much for sharing really just a message about caring and, and authentically uh, that magic question that, that gets to the heart of who and what we are. Um, as we wrap, um, it, you know, we always ask this question, uh, Two and a half years, Beachbody, sounds like a few things may have changed in your life. If you were to just kind of narrow it in, what, what is Beachbody, what have you allowed Beachbody to do for you? You know, I don't know that there's anything in my life Beachbody hasn't changed, if that's the truth. But it's really just given me a way to fulfill that list of life goals that I wrote down as a little girl. It's given me a way to feel like I just profoundly matter to the world. It's given me a chance to be that for my kids and my husband and to have my husband home with us. We just bought a farm in Oregon and we have that chance to be home and just connect with our kids. And it's given me a team who are my family and who I love and who remind me that I matter every single day. And it's given me the big Beachbody community, people like on and my success partner and Brigitte, my coach, who just have profoundly changed my life and who just remind me that every day matters and that I matter to someone else and that they matter to me. And it's just about feeling like every day you get to wake up and have this job where you get to make the world a better place. And I don't know that there could be a greater gift in a job than that. I, I don't know how there could be a better job in the entire world. Well, thank, thank you for sharing that. And I think what a perfectly timed message for the time of year that it is, you know, as well. It, 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 you know, talk about being grateful. It is about relationships. And that's really what you were talking about. Talking about. It's, about it's about other people, helping other people, forming relationships with other people. And, uh, you know, so, so, so many benefits that come, that come from this. So, Missy, thank you so much for doing a phenomenal job of, of giving us that perfect.